Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to be discussing the four major muscles of mastication. Now, first of all, what is mastication? Now, mastication is a fancy term for chewing, which of course is really just moving the mandible up and down. Now, if we look at the mouth, at least the bones that make it up, the superior bone, the maxilla, is static. It does not move. So when we masticate or chew, it's really the movement of the mandible relative to the maxilla. And when we talk about the movements of the mandible, it's not just moving inferiorly and superiorly. Okay? There's other movements such as protrusion, retraction, moving the jaw laterally and medially. And all these movements of the mandible relative to the maxilla are movements at the temporomandibular joint. And so this is a joint that's between the mandibular condyle right here of the mandible and the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. And this joint right here, which we're going to get into in much more detail in a few videos, is called the temporomandibular joint, sometimes abbreviated the TMJ. All four of these mastication muscles are going to move the mandible about the temporomandibular joint. And these four muscles are the masseter, temporalis, and the medial and lateral pterygoids. Out of these four muscles, the masseter and temporalis are the more superficial ones, and the pterygoids are deeper. Okay? Now, a couple things right here. Um, this region right here, shaded in orange and bounded by this orange dotted line, this right here is the temporal fossa. We're going to be discussing that in a lot more detail in the next video. And then this region right here that's shaded in purple, can't really see it too well, but we see a purple dotted line. This region right here is the infratemporal fossa, and this is actually deep to both the zygomatic arch right here and the mandible. And it turns out that a couple of these muscles, that is the pterygoids, are actually going to be in the infratemporal fossa. The temporalis is going to be on the temporal fossa, and then the masseter is out here. And we're about to talk about those origins and insertions right now. Now, the first two muscles we're going to look at are the two that are the most superficial. Those are the temporalis and the masseter. Now, the temporalis is really just going to fill this area right here. Okay? Temporalis has its origin on the floor of the temporal fossa, okay? and it's a convergent muscle, so its origin is very broad, really taking up this entire region right here that has this dotted line. Notice the dotted line doesn't actually continue down here or here along the zygomatic arch. Okay. So really, this dotted line represents where the muscle originates, and then it converges really down to a single tendon, moves underneath or deep to the zygomatic arch, and then it's going to insert on the coronoid process of the mandible. So the coronoid process is this bump that's going to be right here. Okay, It's a little bit covered up by the masseter muscle, but it's right here. That's going to be the insertion of the temporalis muscle. And the temporalis's actions are going to be elevation and retraction of the mandible. And which one it is depends on which fibers of the temporalis are contracting. If you divide up the temporalis really in half, the anterior fibers are going to elevate the mandible, and the posterior fibers back here are going to retract the mandible. And really, mandibular elevation is just moving the mandible up superiorly, and retraction is moving the mandible more or less posteriorly. It's a little bit more complicated than that, and we'll talk about that when we discuss the details of the temporomandibular joint. The other more or less superficial muscle, it's deep to the facial muscles, but superficial with these four, is the masseter. The masseter you can see right here is going to originate on the zygomatic arch, and really partially the zygomatic bone right here anteriorly, and then it's going to insert really just on uh, the lateral surface of the mandibular ramus, and then the angle of the mandible right here. So here's the angle of the mandible, and then the ramus is more anterior right here. That's going to be the insertion of the masseter. And its action is really just going to be elevation of the mandible, so mandibular elevation, so bringing it up superiorly. Now what we're going to see here in a few minutes is that out of these muscles of mastication, there are none that uh, depress the mandible, and that's because really depressing the mandible has to do with relaxation of these muscles and gravity. All you need are these muscles to be relaxed and gravity for the mandible to actually go downwards. There are a couple suprahyoid muscles that will uh, play a small role in depressing the mandible, but really it's mostly gravity and then 
making sure these muscles are relaxed. The other thing here that's important to know is that all four muscles of mastication, um, including the pterygoids not shown here yet, all have the same innervation. It's the mandibular nerve, which is the third major branch of the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve number five, or cranial nerve V3. So all four of these have the exact same innervation. That also means that these are not facial muscles. All the facial muscles are innervated by the facial nerve. These are mandibular nerve, and so they are muscles of mastication. And so that's one very important way to differentiate them from the facial muscles. And then I'm going to go through right now the lateral and medial pterygoid muscles, and we're going to go through these origins and insertions and so forth, but understand we're going to get into the actions of these in a lot more detail in one future video. But for now, we'll take a look at those muscles on this picture. Okay. So the lateral pterygoid is a little bit more superficial than the medial pterygoid. This one's a little bit deeper. The lateral pterygoid has its origin on the greater wing of the sphenoid bone and then something called the lateral pterygoid plate and it's going to insert on the neck of the mandible and also this articular disc that we find within the temporomandibular joint. So here is the lateral pterygoid. It actually has two heads. It has an upper head or superior head and a lower or inferior head which is a little bit larger. You can see the uh, lower head actually originating from over here and the upper head or superior head originating from right here. Either way, both of the muscles are actually going to extend out here toward the temporomandibular joint. And this bone actually right here, this is actually uh, the neck of the mandible. And then you can see that they're also going to insert on this articular disc right here. And actually when they tense on that articular disc, that's actually going to play a role in some of the movements of the temporomandibular joint. But these two muscles right here are the lateral pterygoids. Now the pterygoids as a whole are deeper than the other two muscles that we just talked about, temporalis and masseter. But relative to these two, lateral and medial, the laterals as you can see are a little bit more superficial. The medial pterygoids are deeper overall. Right here we have the superficial head of the medial pterygoid, which does partially go over the lower head of the lateral pterygoid, but the much larger deep head of the medial pterygoid runs underneath or deep to the lower head of the lateral pterygoid. So in contrast to having upper and lower or superior and inferior heads, the medial pterygoid has a deep head that's larger and a superficial head. And when we look at the medial pterygoid, it originates on the lateral pterygoid plate and the maxilla, and it's going to insert on the medial surface of the angle of the mandible. And so you can see that they're actually going to insert on the uh, medial surface, so really the deep surface, right here of the angle of the mandible. Uh, when we look at the masseter, it's really inserting on the lateral surface of the angle of the mandible or the superficial surface. The medial pterygoids insert on the deep surface or the medial surface of the angle of the mandible, so you can't actually see it, but it's on the other side right here. Okay, So up here, lateral pterygoids, overall a little bit more superior, more superficial. Here's the medial pterygoids, overall more inferior, a little bit deeper, especially the deep head. Not so much the superficial head, but it's a little bit smaller. And then when we talk about these, the lateral pterygoids action is going to be to bilaterally protrude the mandible, so sticking the mandible out forward. Okay? Um, when both lateral pterygoids on the left and right contract together, that's what we get, mandibular protrusion. But unilaterally, it's going to move it side to side. So if you only have the left lateral pterygoid contracting, the mandible is going to move laterally to the left. So ipsilateral mandibular translation to the same side. Okay? And then the medial pterygoids are going to elevate and protrude the mandible. So when they both contract, they're going to elevate the mandible. And they can also protrude it just like the lateral pterygoids. Um, however, they can also unilaterally and ipsilaterally move it to the side. So they can translate it left or right in the same way that the lateral pterygoids do. And then also, because they are muscles of mastication, they're all innervated by the mandibular nerve, the third branch of cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal nerve. Okay, So we're going to be going into the lateral and medial pterygoids in a lot more detail in one of the following videos, and so we'll get a much better handle on how these actually produce movements at the temporomandibular joint. But hopefully this gave you a good understanding of at least the origins, insertions, actions, and innervations of the muscles of mastication.
please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.